Hello everybody, it's Jamie and welcome back again to a shipwreck video. Today we're gonna talk about the sad sinking of the uh, TAV Wahine. So uh, let's begin. So let's first start with part two and that is her construction and early life. Wahine was built by the Fairfield Shipbuilding and Engineering Company in Govan, Glasgow, Scotland. Plans were made by the Union Company in 1961 and a key was laid on 14 September 1946. Ash hole number 830. Built of steel, her hull was completed in 10 months and she was christened and launched on 14 July 1956 by the Union's company director's wife. Her machinery, cargo spaces and passenger accommodations were installed in the following months and she was completed in May 1966. She left Gronach, Scotland for New Zealand on 80 June 1966 and arrived at Wellington on 24 July 1966. She sailed on her maiden voyage to Lilliton one week later on 1 August. The dimensions were 488 feet, 194 meters long had a beam of 71 feet and was 8,984 gross register tons. At the time, Wahine was the, union com the Union's company's largest ship and one, of the and one of the world's largest passenger ferries. The power plant was turboelectric transmission with four boilers supplying steam to the two turbo alternators that drove the twin main propellers and gave her a top speed of 22 knots. And the ship also had stern, also had stern and bow thrusters propellers to propel her sideways for easier berthing. She had stabilizers that helped the amount she rolled at the frequency when she did so. The hull was divided by 13 watertight bulkheads into 14 watertight compartments. The lifeboat complement was eight large fiberglass lifeboats, two 626 foot and motor lifeboats, motor lifeboats each with a capacity of 50 people. Standard lifeboats each with a capacity of 99 people and additionally 63 inflatable rafts each with a capacity of 25 people. Wahine entered service on 1 August 1966 with her first sailing from Burlington replacing TAV Hinemoa. Between then and the end of the year she made 67 crossings to Lilliton from August 1966. TAV Wahine, TAV Wahine and the TAV Maori provided a two-ship regular overnight service between Wellington and Lilliton, with one ship departing from each port each night and crossing during the night. The arrival of Wahine, Wahine enabled Hinemoa to be withdrawn from the service and the AV Ran Rangitira. That last sailed on 14 December 1956 and Hinemoa were and Hinamoa were subsequently sold. On a normal crossing, Rohine crew complement was usually 126. In the deck department, the master, three officers, one radio operator and 19 sailors managed the overall operation. In the engine department, eight engineers, two electricians, one donkey man and 12 general workers supervise the operation of the engines. In Victory Department, 60 stewards, 7 stewardesses, 5 cooks and 4 purses gathered to the needs of the passengers. On trips made during the day, she could carry 1,150 passengers. On overnight crossings, 927. In over 300 single two, three and four berth cabins with two dormitory style cabins, each sleeping 12 passengers. 
Common areas included a cafeteria, lounge, smoke room, gift shop, and two enclosed promenades, hands over decks. Wohine had two vehicle decks with a combined capacity for more than 200 cars. And now we move on to uh, her sinking. In the early morning of Wednesday, 10 April, two violent storms merged from over Wellington, creating a single extropical cyclone that was the worst recorded in the New Zealand's history. Cyclone Giselle was heading south after causing much damage in the north of the North Island. It hit Wellington at the same time as a novel storm that had driven up the west coast of the South Island of from Antarctica. The winds in Wellington were the strongest ever recorded. At one point they reached 200 257 kilometers per hour and in one Wellington suburb alone ripped off the roofs of 86 houses. Three ambulances and a truck were blown into their sights when they tried to go into the area to rescue injured people. At the storms, as the storms hit Wellington Harbor, Wahine was making her way out of Cook Strait on the last legs of her journey. Although there were weather warnings when she set out from Leyton, there was no indication that storms would be severe or any worse than those often experienced by vessels crossing the Croke Strait. At 8.50, with winds gusting at between 100 km per hour and 155 km per hour, Captain Hector Gordon Robinson decided to enter harbor. 20 minutes later, the winds had increased 260 km per hour, and she lost her radar. A huge wave pushed her off course and in line with Barrent Reef. Robertson was unable to turn her back on course and decided to keep turning around back out to sea. For 13 minutes, she battled into the waves and wind, but by 6.10 she was not answering her helm and had lost control of her engines. At 6.40 she was driven into the southern tip of Barrent Reef, near the harbour entrance, less than a mile from shore. She drifted along the reef, shearing off her starboard propeller and a gouging a large hole in her hull on the starboard side of the stern, beneath the waterline. Passengers were told that she was aground, but there was no in in immediate danger. They were directed to their life jackets and report to their master station as routine pr precautionary measure. So in other words, just to be safe. The storm continued to grow more intense and the wind increased to over 250 km per hour and she dragged her anchors and drifted in into the harbor. At about 11.00, close to the western shore at Seafound, her anchors finally held. At about the same time, she, about the same ti time, the Tuk Tapui reached her and tried to attach a line and bring her in tow. But after 10 minutes, the line broke. Other attempts failed, but the deputy harbor master, Captain Galloway, managed to climb aboard from the pilot boat. Throughout the morning, the danger of the ship seemed to pass as the vessel's location was in an area where the water depth did not extend 10 meters, and the crew's worst case scenario was the, was the cleanup once the vessel either arrived in Wellington or had grounded in shallow water. There was indication that the ship would even sail again that evening, as usual a blight later that scheduled while the damage done by the reef was repaired. At around 13.50, the combined effect of the tide and the storm swung Wahina around, providing a path of clear water sheltered from the wind, as she suddenly listed further and reached the point of no return. Robertson gave the order to abandon ship. In an instant, similar to what had occurred during the sinking of the Italian passenger liner Andrea Doria of the coast of New England in 1965. The, the, severe, the severe starboard lift list left the four lifeboats on the port side useless. Only the four on the starboard side could be launched. 
The first starboard motor lifeboat, boat S1, capsized shortly after being launched. Those, abo those aboard were thrown into the water and many were drowned in the rough sea, including two children and several elderly passengers. Survivor Shirley Hick, remembered for losing two of her three children in the disaster, recalled this event vividly as her three-year-old daughter, Elma, had drowned in this lifeboat. Some managed to hold onto the, onto the overturned boat as it drifted across the harbor to the eastern shore towards e East Barn. The three remaining, the three remaining standard lifeboats, which according to a number of survivors were severely overcrowded, did manage to reach shore. Lifeboat S2 reached Southern Beach on the western side of the channel with about 70 passengers and crew, as did lifeboat S4, which was severely overcrowded with over 100 people. Heavily overcrowded lifeboat S3 landed on the beach near Eastbourne, about 3 miles away on the opposite side of the channel. Wahine launched her, rif her life rafts, but weighs up to 6 meters high capsized some of them, and many people were killed. She sank in 86 feet of water, forcing hundreds of passengers and crew into the rough sea. When the weather cleared, the sight of, of her foundering in the harbor urged many vessels to race to the scene, including the ferry GMV Armormona, tugs, fishing boats, yachts and small personal craft. They rescued hundreds of people. Over 200 passengers and crew reached the rocky shore of the east side of the channel, south of Eastburn. As this area was desolate and unpopulated, many survivors were exposed to the elements for several hours, while rescue teams tried to navigate the gravel road down the shoreline. It was, th it was here that a number of bodies, bodies were recovered. At about 14.30, Wahine rolled completely onto her starboard side. Some of the survivors reached the shore only to die of exhaustion or exposure. 51 people died at the time, and two more died later from their injuries. 35 victims in all, most of the victims were middle-aged or elderly, but included three children. They died from downing, exposure or injuries from being battered onto the rocks. 46 bodies were found. 506 566 passengers were safe, as were 110 crew, and 6 were missing. And that wraps up this bit of shipwrecks, but I had something to say. When I was uh, writing the script last, uh, yesterday, and when, um, when I saw the... Uh, when I was reading or eyeing uh, the survivor account of Shirley Hick, that she lost uh, two of the three children in that lifeboat. I can't imagine. You're, or, or just try to picture it for you. You're in a you're a mother on a sinking ship with a heavy storm. Two of your children are going in a lifeboat that is that is going down in in massive waves into a storm, and you see that lifeboat being swapped over in the ocean, and your children drowning, and you as the mother standing on the ship and being able to do nothing my heart or when when i was reading that yesterday i couldn't stop thinking i couldn't sleep because that image was playing in my heart and i can't imagine how terrible it has been for that mother so my heart goes out for shirley Schick. uh shirley hick shirley hick um it must have been terrible to see so like i said this wraps up a video um i hope you guys enjoyed it i feel like i didn't stutter as much as the previous one so i'm quite happy about that um if you have friends who like ships or ocean liners please show them my channel we're trying to hit these 200 sub and uh, next video will be again a book review and i have a very good book to show you that i highly recommend so stay tuned for that um guys 
Wherever you are, have a good night or day, and we will see each other on the next video. Goodbye.